Well, hello, Underwhelm listeners. It is a new year, but I am the same me, and it's pretty much the same podcast, except it's now the rotational co-host schedule, so hope that everybody's excited. Um, Very first week of the year, first week of the month, so Lisa is joining me, and we had a discussion about what else but New Year's resolutions. And I've always been one to be underwhelmed by New Year's resolutions, and I could never really put the words as to why that was necessarily the case. Um, And even when we were recording this podcast, I still couldn't put the words to why this was the case. But then yesterday, so uh, after we had recorded it, it had come to me why they bother me. And I texted Lisa and I said, now I can finally put words to it. I think it's because I feel motivated all year long to do a lot of different things. And I like trying new things. I like learning new things. And I'm motivated and I, I consider myself a pretty hard worker. And it's really frustrating to watch normally lazy people act like they know everything for two weeks and then go back to being lazy. And so somebody that is normally motivated and normally a hard worker that sees temporary hard workers is just like, ugh. Plus then you have to compete with them for those two weeks and it all sorts itself out in the long run, but it's just annoying and you have to deal with their Instagram posts and their social media posts and I went to the gym and I did this and I did that and ugh, it's just too much. It's overkill and I get it. Like, Trying to show the world that you're a new person, it's a new year, a new you, but it's just too much. So don't do it. Just be a hard worker all year and be going towards your goals all year. But with that, I will leave you with this week's episode. So enjoy this conversation between Lisa and myself. I hope that everybody has a happy new year and we are getting into the worst part of the year, the January, February, March time frame. So be sure to catch up on Underwhelmed because that'll keep you company and will keep you company. So here we go. Can you believe it's 2019? I feel like 2018 flew by, but I always feel like that. Mm-hmm. The end of the year, and you told me this probably, I don't know how many years ago, but you you said it's May and then it's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. I feel like this has been the longest, shortest year of my life, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. the most exhausting, most, just so much going on, but then also it went so fast and like, what, what the hell is going on? And now here we are 2019. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, obviously with all the new year, you know, all talk of the new year and new Mm -hmm. years, people then always go back to new year's resolutions. Yep. Hashtag new beginnings. (laughs) <laughs> I am not into new beginnings <laughs> or I like, I don't mind new beginnings. It's just why they always have to be on January 1st. I know. Oh, that's uh Joe who the listeners know from the last uh, podcast that, that I did with you. My friend, Joe, he hates the hashtag new beginnings. <laughs> yeah. I could put that on. I, you know what? We can make a list of most hated hashtags, like how I hate forever wedding date. And I hate, <laughs> um, it's so annoying. Like, you know which one I okay. hate? Be still my heart. I hate it when oh people my- pictures of their kids or dogs and write that. I don't know why. Because I get it. <laughs> but like, I, I'm over that one for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think what other ones that I don't like. I think it's anything that isn't necessarily given when they use hashtags. So like the forever yeah. wedding date is always a noise because I'm like, I, what if you, what if your husband can't make it to a wedding one day? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you, so what are your thoughts on new year's resolutions? Um, so, you know, I kind of take the stance that I do on most things in life is do what you what, what's best for you on those. Sometimes yeah. I make them, um, but usually I don't. And I kind of like to look at the at the new year as a good refresher time. Mm-hmm. I feel like I want to. I like to end every year a little bit better than when I began when when it began. So yeah, I like to grow as a person, 
I liked to be in a, you know, maybe a little bit better place in life at the end of the year. Um, and just, you know, just end it better than you started. it. And that's how I like to do it. I don't like, I don't really set very specific goals for myself. Just, just be a better person, do better things. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think that that's the way that I feel too, in general, how I feel like I'm constantly looking to improve. So if I'm constantly looking to improve, I don't have certain goals that start on the first of the year because I've been doing it all year or thinking about it all year and I'm going to continue to think about it. So I think it's good to have very specific goals. But then I also think that those specific goals sometimes limit you. So you can't kind of look outside the box. I agree. I agree. But you know, for the most people, it does not work. (laughs) Well, I do know that. You know what? If that's what you want to do and you want to set a, a, you know, a goal for yourself for the, for the year, then more power to you and good luck with it. So. Yeah. I, and I think more power to them too. I personally try to stay away from people that make new year's resolutions mainly because they're so annoying in January because think (laughs) about it. When like, okay, so say the gym thing, like, I mean, I enjoy working out so I could appreciate that. But then yeah. like, say they're going to do a new diet. Now you're trying to go get lunch with them and say it's a coworker <laughs> or something. And now you have to deal with all their diet restrictions. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, when's going to end? Uh, well, I, I am that annoying person because I like to do any and every diet. As I've said before, I'm always trying to find some shortcut to being skinny other than just living a oh, yeah. healthy lifestyle all the time. Um, but I Yeah, but you, I feel like you don't do it on January 1st. Like it doesn't annoy me if somebody comes in like February 15th and is like, hey, I'm going to, that doesn't annoy me at all for some reason. It's when they start on January 1st, it annoys me. I always... Um, like to do a like a pre-holiday I wouldn't say a slim down because it's generally not that but I do like a <laughs> diet I'll really watch what I eat and work out really up until um Thanksgiving and then I just kind of let myself indulge for the end of the year <laughs> don't worry about it I still work out as I, I always like to work out but I don't want to think about food I just want to enjoy it and then I kind of like to, to start eating healthy again right after the new year. So I am kind of one of those people with that. So I think it's a but good... I would, I would agree with that too. But I guess I also don't set specific goals. I just naturally tend to enjoy it when there's a celebration. And then yeah. I'll eat, start eating more salads at lunch, probably. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't know. Um, you said you had some stats. I want to hear your stats. Yeah. Yeah, so um, did a little bit of research, uh, and and I this is information from the internet. I don't even know what specific. Actually, Statista. That's fine. I like great information. So, uh, but forty five percent of Americans make New Year's resolutions, and eight percent of them actually achieve them. And okay. I think it was forty percent. Not 40%. It was definitely more than that. And I didn't write this one down. But it was, I, no, I think it was like 80% of people by February have already like broken their resolution. So, oh, yeah. I know that. I know that that's a huge number. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really surprising to me. So I guess I'm just the kind of person, if I really set like a specific goal for myself, I just do it. So, me too. Like 8% achieve that. And if you look at, so I also jotted down some of the top resolutions, which, um, how, uh, which is, it's strange to me that only 8% of people achieve these because some of these aren't that hard. I guess it just depends on <laughs> like, like, the amount So like one of the top ones, these were for 2018. So this last year, um, 53% of people that made a resolution, their resolution was to save money. Okay. Now, I guess in, if you put like a specific amount, then like maybe 8%. So what happens in February? They just stop. They're like, <laughs> well, <laughs> you like it's, it's really, I mean, I guess, I mean, if you want to save a hundred bucks for the year, then you've saved money and you've achieved your resolution. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that could be that hard, but lose weight, get in shape, of course, is, is the next one, 45% of people. Um, so I guess I semi fall into that category because I feel like every year I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit better well, in that area and save money. I, <laughs> so I, guess I'm in this. I feel like I'm always in that. Like I'm always trying to be skinnier. Like when, it, when are you not trying to be skinnier? Like even when I'm not eating well, I'm still in my head trying to be skinnier. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. I'm trying <laughs> to be rich and skinny. So I get those top two. 
Um, yeah. It was kind of a tie for the next. It was all around like 20 to 25% of people were um, more sex, travel, more reading, learn a new skill or hobby, or buy a house. We're all in like the 20 to 25% range. So, okay, but that 8% number is kind of low because if you say I'm going to buy a house, like how many people are not actually achieving the goal of buying a house? Because I'm sure that they have thought about it ahead of time and they just say that this is the year I'm going to do it. Yeah, like you're not going to have that as a goal if you can't do it. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, yeah, but I mean, like even travel and read, if your New Year's resolution was to read more and you're one of the only 8% of people, like just pick up (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um so and then the last two which were about 15 percent were quit smoking um and find love so i'm guessing that quit okay. smoking has gone down because i think a lot less people smoke than they used to so that, i bet that used to be like a really big one i also feel like find love is a pretty hard goal to achieve just because Well, I guess it depends what you're looking for. Like if you're looking for like a sugar daddy, that'll like, I mean, and you want to consider that love, that should be easy enough to find. You just go on one of those websites. But if you're trying to find somebody that's a good match for you that you're going to marry, you really have very little control over when you're going to meet those people. You could say you're going to put yourself out there more because maybe you stay at home and don't talk to people. But it's pretty hard to say like, I'm going to go out the same amount and go on just as many dates, but this is going to be the year I find love. Like, how does that work? Yeah. So I feel like that's a, that's a pretty lofty goal, but um, yeah, I think it's a better option to just say, I'm going to try, I'm going to put myself out there a little bit more and maybe try a little bit harder and maybe it'll be a little more open. Yeah. So maybe the the goals should just be better worded and better goals instead of maybe that's why people are failing. Yeah. So when I was doing the research, I looked up where New Year's res- resolutions actually came from. Uh, so it used to be a little more of a religious practice. And now it's hmm. secular. But um, so where it originated was actually, here's our history lesson for the day. And I actually pulled this from history.com. So this should be somewhat legit. <laughs> but, Sounds official. <laughs> um the Babylonians, 4,000 years ago, at the new year, which for them was actually in March, they made a promise each year to pay their debts and, and return borrowed objects at the beginning of the new year. Those are the promises that they made. So that was sort of their New Year's resolution. I think that those are good New Year's resolutions. Like yeah, if you owe back. something to somebody, <laughs> like, I think that's good. I think we should probably do that across the board Yeah, here, now, today. Turn borrowed uh, objects. Um, so, the, and then uh, the Romans. So Julius Caesar, um, he actually was the one that changed the calendar to make January 1st, the beginning of the new year. So I'm sure somebody mm-hmm. can fact that and tell me I'm wrong, but that's what it said on his. I was going to, I was just going to ask you why. <laughs> yes, I, I don't, I didn't dig in that deep, but January is named after a two faced God called Janus or Janus or however it's pronounced. Mm-hmm. But this uh, this god, the spirit inhabited doorways and it was a two-faced god. So it, uh, it looked back on the previous year and looked forward into the future. So Romans made sacrifices to this god and promises uh, to, for as of better behavior <laughs> in the new year. Uh, so that was a practice mm-hmm. of theirs. So that's kind of another way that New Year's resolutions started. They promised to be better, which I think a lot of what our, our typical... New Year's resolutions that we see uh, come from too. So pretty interesting. Yeah, well, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Well, I had told you that I I wanted to do anti-New Year's resolutions. <laughs> and so <laughs> then, of course, I started Googling it just to see if there's anything out there. And there are. There's a Forbes article that talks about anti-New Year's resolutions. But their anti-New Year's resolutions that they were talking about are the... I don't like those ones either because those are the type of things like here's... I just pulled it up. Um, they wrote this article in 2014. Okay, so here's an example of a, a list. I'll stop setting unrealistic goals for my business and feeling disappointed when I don't hit them. I'll unsubscribe from at least three mailing lists I never read. So like those are still resolutions. Yeah, They're just... I, I, I don't even know what... They're still resolutions is what it comes yeah. down to. So that's not what I was talking about. 